Hello, my happy patrons. And first of all, I want to say thank you so much for allowing me to do this for you all. I'm very excited because over the last oh, two years or so, um, I started writing up and developing a couple of designs that I've had in my head. And what I do is at night when my husband and I go to bed, he watches some crazy movie or show and I grab my tablet and I start jotting down or what I like to say doodling um, some ideas down and to be honest I never really thought they'd see the light of day because there's always so much going on and I really didn't think you know people would like them too much but this is my opportunity to share them with you guys exclusively so thank you thank you thank you so much for allowing me to do that so this very first one that I have for you is actually a really simple fun one that I have um, and uh, it is a hat. So for this, we're going to need a couple of things. Obviously, we're gonna need our loom hook, some masking tape, it's your best friend next to your loom. Uh, measuring tape, I have Mr. Froggy. You're gonna have two different color marking pens, um, scissors, darning needle, and um, the loom that I am using, let me move all this out of the way, is my 48 peg chunky loom from KB Looms. As you can see, I already have the one that I'm working on started on here because it's really simple and I wanna show you guys the technique for it. It's a simple uh, four pattern or, or four row repeat and it gives you this really nice, it, it might be kind of hard to tell right now, but it gives you this nice textured design. I call it three peas in a pod because you're actually going to be purling instead of like knit two together or knit three together, um, we're gonna purl three together. So three peas in a little pod. Ta-da! <laughs> My son actually helped me name this um, because of that. So I thought it was genius. But the thing I love about this the most, and especially for me, I have a lot of really thick hair and even though I love to wear hats, they tend to get really warm on my head. So this is a great pattern because as you can kind of see, um, let me put something behind it so you guys can see through a little bit more. Let me grab a little piece of paper here. Let's see if maybe that'll help a little bit. There you go. You can kind of see when you stretch it a lot, um, it has a little bit of a hole a lacy effect going on with it but it is still nice and warm for this particular one here I am using um, some yarns that I got last year and it's these really fun um, Karen chunky cupcakes and as you can see I got it on clearance this one was um, two dollars and seventy seven cents at Michaels and I have so many of these this particular color is called where is it? Um, Blackberry Sorbet. And it's a number five worsted, uh, excuse me, a number five chunky, as you can see here, or bulky. Um, there you go. And I really love how this is working up. You can see the fun colors that are in there, a lot of pinks, purples. Um, and over here, I'm just getting started actually on the light pink. And as you can see here, there's already like a great purple and then we go a little bit lighter and then it goes a little darker again and now we're getting into the lighter pink here and what I love about these also is they come with their own little palms how adorable is that so here's some of the other ones that I got that are the chunky ones um, this is another really super fun one and it is called um, berry blast again this is the bulky one and you can see all the really fun colors you got the purples the pinks the oranges the yellows and a really adorable little pom-pom that's automatically attached you just snip this little part down here and it comes off so that way you can tie it on that's from the one I'm working on now here was another one and again I mean you can make a whole hat out of this easily and it was only two dollars and seventy seven cents because they were trying to get rid of all of them um, this one here is called grape sickle um, and another like that. Now, they also had the regular Karen Cupcakes, which is a finer, this is a, a number three, I believe. Yeah, that one's a number three. Let's see, there we go. 
And this one is called um, Sour Grapes. And this is a lot of blues and greens, purples, really pretty. And again, with another little pom-pom. This one isn't as um, poofy as the chunky one, but it is still super, super cute. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys some of those. And this is really awesome because like I said, it's just um, a matter of knitting three rounds and then where you're gonna do the, the pearl threes, okay? So what I've done, and again, this is all gonna be in the written pattern. I just wanted to show you guys how to set up your loom because this is gonna be really easy. And I did all of this in just a couple of hours. I'm gonna have this finished um, probably in another two hours or so. Um, and then I'll have it available for just you guys. This is not going out to anybody else. This is only for my patrons here. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for your love and your support. Trust me, it means more than you will ever understand. So the first thing I'm gonna have you guys do is you can use um, any loom that is divisible by four. I like to use this chunky loom. It's one of my favorites, especially with a bulky yarn. Even though this is a thin bulky yarn, obviously, as you can see, it works perfect. Um, and if you wanna use uh, a thinner yarn like this one here, which is the three or even a four, you can totally do that. I would suggest using the 80 peg small gauge loom if you have that, um, as long as it's divisible by four. Now I do have um, a 60 peg, which is the topper for the double rotating loom, um, which will work just fine for this as well. So whatever you wanna use, just make sure that it works with the yarn that you're gonna use. So if you're gonna use a thicker yarn, you're gonna use a bigger gauge. If you're gonna use a thinner yarn, you're gonna use a smaller gauge. Okay, so what you wanna do is first mask off your loom and then you're simply gonna go around it. And again, all of this is in the written pattern and you're gonna mark it. Um, I did a brim on here of 10. So just a knit pearl all the way around rib. So you're gonna do 10 for your brim. You can cast on any way you like. There's really no big deal on the preference on that. I did, I believe, just a simple E-wrap cast on. And then um, really easy, you're just gonna go around the whole thing and you'll see the black tick marks on here on every other one. That was for when I did my brim. And then I have the pink on here and the pink is shown the pattern. So the very first one you wanna start with is a knit. Then you're gonna do an arrow going over to the next peg. So if you work like me, which is clockwise, you're gonna work from right to left. If you're the other way, counterclockwise, you're gonna work left to right. Um, so depending on which way you use this is how you're gonna go. But you're gonna do, I'm telling this in the clockwise. So the first one is knit. Then the second one, you're gonna have an arrow pointing over to the third one. This is so you know to grab this one and move it over here to give it three strands on here and grab this one and bring it over here. So you're gonna have a knit. This is gonna be yarn over going left. Then you're gonna come over here, you're gonna yarn over grabbing right and that'll give you the three strands on here as you can see that we're gonna be purling off. There you go. And then you're gonna continue that. So knit, move over, move over and then you'll have three um, so you're just basically going to mark that whole thing all the way around your loom in those four so knit arrow left put a p3 so you know to purl three on that one and then an arrow right so these two are going to come together and then another knit and then you continue all the way around okay so once that's marked first thing you're going to do obviously is your brim and then you're going to go right into the pattern so on this one, which I have is round uh, 11, you're going to knit. Round 12, you're gonna see where it says knit, but you're going to set up for row 13, which is your pattern. And if you've done my Rainier or anything like that, the reason why I say you're gonna set it up is it makes it so much easier for you when you have to move these over so that they're not so tight, you don't wanna break your pegs, you don't wanna break your hook, you don't wanna break anything, okay? So when you do round 12, that's gonna help you set up for 13, which will make your whole 
round 13 look like this to where all you have to do is just go in and do your knits and your pearl freeze. And it makes it so much easier for you uh, with this hack, okay? Um, so that's, when, you, when you set up this row and you knit and purl off 13, row 14 is just a knit, and then you start over again at row 11. So it's really simple, it's a knit, knit, but that second knit on round 12 is a setup to set you up like this. 13 is to complete this one, and then 14 is a knit. That's it, and it gives you this really nice, um, it's nice and thick from the yarn that I'm using, but it gives you that airiness and it lets your head breathe a little bit. And um, it's really nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Um, I'm gonna do one full, uh, one through four. Now I purposely left it on 13 because I wanted you guys to see um, how it's gonna look when you have three on there and um, what it's gonna look like on the actual pattern row because we pretty much all know how to do a unit. All right, so let me grab my hook and we'll get started on that. All right, so I got my hook. Now for this one, I like to use um, the hook that came with my KB because it's super, super sturdy. Not that my Cinderwood one isn't, but um, for the pearls on these, they're not super tight, but it just makes it easier because this is a little bit pointier. Well, let me show you here. This hook happens to be a little pointier um, than the uh, cinder wood. Sorry, broken now. All right, let's get started. So on this first one, as you can see, there's only a single strand. That's already been knitted off when I came around and set this up. So um, I'm going to just run through this row real quick so we can start on the row 11 or round 11 and then we can start that 11, 12, 13, 14 right through. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to get this done and I'll be back with you in a moment. All right, so I went ahead and I closed off that round 13 and I did 14. And as you can see, all of them have one strand on them all the way around. All right, so now we're back here at my starting peg and what I did is I um, I have that marked, you can barely see it under there with green tape, but as you can see, I have it highlighted in yellow, so I know that's my starting peg. Now on round 11, as you see in the written pattern, it's just a simple knit and we do not e-wrap this at all. Nothing gets e-wrapped, it's all pearl and uh, unit or true knit, which is the same thing. It's, it's like, um, you know, taking two different roads to get to the same destination. So unit and true knit, as I'm sure many of you know, gives you the same outcome. So for me, I like to do unit. It's a lot easier. All right. So round 11 requires that you knit all the way around. So you're just going to go and knit all the way around. All right. And just continue this all the way around. I'm going to pause the video and then meet me back here at the starter peg and we're gonna go on round 12, but I'm gonna show you how to use that row as the setup, as I mentioned in the written pattern, which will make your life so much easier, not only for this, but for anything. Like if you've done my Rainier Cal, you've seen me use that little hack um, on setting up with the row before when you have to do your yarn overs to make things so much easier for you. So go ahead. I'm going to pause the video, you pause yours, and I'll meet you back here at the starting peg to get started on round 12. All right, now I am coming up on the end of round 11. As you can see, I'm back here at my starting peg. Sorry, I broke my nail. It doesn't look very attractive. I'm back here at my starter peg. So on round 12, in the written directions, you're going to see that it says knit, and then in parentheses, it says set up. Uh, for round 13 and this is what I'm talking about so right here my very first starter peg obviously is a knit so I'm going to knit that one now my peg next to it is one where I'm going to move this working yarn over to this and then over here I'm going to move this to this and how I do that even though this is still round 12 I knit off but then I go back and I move stuff to make it a whole lot easier where it's not stressing your yarn or anything else, okay? So I'm gonna knit this one, which is my yarn over peg. I'm gonna knit the Pearl 3 one, 
But then I'm gonna tug a little bit on this purl three just to loosen up the yarn. I'm gonna come back here to the yarn over one and it's gonna look like that. You see how I have that pulled out? So this is my starter, so knit. This is gonna move over here to the P3. Carry that over and lay it on the one where it says P3. So now on the purl three one, I actually have two strands, okay? And then I'm gonna to go to the next one, which is my fourth one, knit that one off, knit the next one, which is actually the knit peg. So here, I still have the two on here. I have this one, which is right next to it that I'm gonna move over and this knit. So I'm going to, again, tug on this working yarn here a little bit, pull it out. I'm gonna to go to this one and tug it a little bit. Then I'm gonna lift it off and come back over here and now, as you can see, here's my starting peg. This one's knitted, this one's empty, which is a yarn over. I have three, one, two, three strands on that P3, as you can see right there. Let me clear that in. Boom, one, two, three. And this one's empty, and now I'm starting my next set, which is a knit move, you know, the same thing we just did. And this is what sets up row 13 to move so smoothly for you because we're doing 12, but then we're setting up and going back and setting up for 13 at the same time. So again, I've already knitted this first one. I'm going to knit this one, knit the P3 one, tug a little bit, tug on this one, and then I'm going to carry over and pop that on the one for my purl three. Then I'm going to knit, knit one more and go back and do the same thing. I'm gonna pull out a little bit of that working yarn, pull it over here and carry over. And it makes it so much easier for you that way, okay? So continue doing that all the way around until you come back to your starter peg and I'll meet you back here. Alrighty gang, so I have gone all the way around. And as you can see, this is like what it looked like when I first started the video. So here's my starter peg. I stopped at the um, P3 before that. And as you can see, I have one strand on my knits. So here's a knit, there's a knit. And then my empty ones, I have three strands on my P3. One, two, three. So all the ones that are marked as a knit peg will have one strand. All the um, arrowed pegs will be empty and then you will have three strands on all of your pearl threes. See, as you can see here, let me separate them a little bit. There you go. So again, all of your knit pegs one, all your arrow pegs are empty, and all your P3 will have three on there. So now we finished row 12. Let me finish this one off here. So let me start that. And that's gonna be my last P3. Okay, and then snug it up. So what you're gonna do is on row 13, you have it already all set up, so it makes it a whole lot easier. You don't have to grab it while it's really tight and move it over. I don't have time for that, neither do you, which is why I came up with this really great hack. Um, on the empty pegs, you're just gonna yarn in front. So as you can see, my first peg, my starter peg, is my knit peg. There's one on there, and I've already knitted that one so that I can bring that um, last strand over here. So I'm gonna bring my working yarn in front of my empty one. You don't have to e-wrap it, you don't do any of that. You're just gonna bring the working yarn in front, then come down and you're gonna hit that first P3, grab all three of them, okay? So you're gonna bring your working yarn just like you would a regular purl stitch, okay? So let me try and move this down a little bit so you guys can see a little better. So I always bring my working yarn down here with my finger I take my hook and I go from the top all the way through all three. I grab that loop of the working yarn, bring it through, and then I lift these three off. And take your time, if they're a little tight, just you don't have to pull them really hard, just work them. And there you go. So this first one was already knitted. Here I have the yarn over. I just um, purled off all three of those together. And then I'm bringing my working yarn in front of this empty one and I'm gonna go into a knit, okay? And you just go again. So here is the empty. I'm gonna bring it down, purl, all three, 
grab it, lift it off, and drop that new loop on. Bring the working yarn in front, and then knit. So you're gonna complete that all the way around. And then meet me back here at the starting peg once you guys are done with round 13. All right, so I have completed all the way around. I'm here at my last peg. But as you can see, every one of them has just one strand on it all the way around. All right, now we are on, let me finish this last one because see that was a yarn over one. So I'm just gonna bring my working yarn over, go into my first peg and knit that one. Whoops, that's what I get for trying to use it with one hand basically. There we go, all right. So now we're gonna do round 14, which is simply knit, that's it, okay? So you're just gonna go around the whole thing and knit them all off. And that is how easy this is. So round 11 is knit. Round 12 is a knit with setting up for round 13. 13 is where you just go around and you knit off your knit pegs and you purl three together on the P3 pegs. You yarn over on the empty ones. And then here on round 14, you're just simply knitting. And that's it, that's how simple this is. You're gonna continue this, um, the four rounds, until you get to about eight and a half to nine inches, which I'm gonna complete this, and then I will be back and show you how to do the decrease so that you get a nice um, top where it's not real bulky, where the crown is nice and neat, and um, then we'll finish it off. All right, so I'm gonna keep working here. You guys keep working until you get to the desired length that you want. Um, again, if you're doing an adult hat, I would recommend going about eight and a half to nine inches, especially if you're like me and you have a lot of hair. And if you like it a little slouchy, you can totally do it longer. Anywhere between 10 and 12 inches is really good for a slouchy hat. Or if you don't wanna put a palm on it, that's completely okay. Maybe you wanna make a messy bun out of it. I will, um, give you guys the link to the tutelit video where she shows how you can basically um, make any hat into a messy bun and use an elastic band. So there you go. I'm going to keep working here. You keep working there and I'll meet you guys back when I'm ready to decrease. Thanks gang. Howdy gang and welcome back. So as you can see, I have a nice amount here. Let me move my camera a little bit so you guys can get a better view all right let me grab my handy dandy froggy tape measure and what i like to do is just put it on the first um peg between the first and the second and then just make sure this is all pulled down and as you can see and i'm not i'm not pulling it and stretching it too much but there we go and as you can see i'm right at the nine inch mark now i did this one a little longer you can do between eight and nine i did this one a little bit longer because i i just love the colors so much that i'm going to keep it for myself <laughs> and because i have so much hair i like to kind of tuck it all up in there so now that i've got the length that i want and again the the length that you choose to do for an adult hat you want to have between eight and nine inches comfortably if you're going to do for a child, obviously, depending on the size of the child and size of their head, you want to use a smaller loom or just go a little bit shorter. So it's completely up to you. I'm just showing you how to make this really awesome hat. And as you can see here, now that the light is coming through a little bit more, you can see the laciness of it. But this yarn that I'm using, and again, I am using Karen Chunky Cupcakes, which I found on clearance for $2.77 at Michael's. Hello? snagging that and it comes with an adorable pom-pom in case you forgot um but as you can see it has this really nice effect and as it relaxes it comes out more and I, I fell in love with this at first when I started working it up like with a lot of my doodles I I have an image in my head but until it actually starts working up you just never really know. But now that I've worked it up, I just, I absolutely love it. It's so simple and easy to do. So I really want to know what the feedback is from you guys when you start doing it, what your thoughts are on it. But I love it. And it works great 
with um, a uh, self-striping yarn like this one that I'm using or even a solid it's really gonna pop now if you use something that's a little too busy like um, a variegated yarn or one that just has you know a, a big pattern ish effect going on I don't know if it's really gonna pop as much possibly so if you guys happen to do something with that kind of yarn let me know I'm just kind of curious so what, what I'm going to do now is we're going to do a, a simple, what I like to refer to as a, a four peg decrease. We're going to do it over a series of four pegs. This is a 48 peg, so we're divisible by four. If for some reason you are using a loom that's not divisible by four, if you have a 41, just work that extra one in. No looming police here, I promise. So to do this, it's really simple. Um, I'm going to start on my, my starting peg, which is this one right here. You're going to just unit the first four. And again, bear with me because I have to figure out a way of doing this so it doesn't make it so uncomfortable with me with the camera. <laughs> I'm working with the my arms on either side of the camera. So you're going to knit just a simple unit, the first four. After you've knit the fourth one off, take that working yarn off and lift it over to three. Get on there. And that'll give you two strands on three, and then the fourth peg is gonna be empty, okay? Bring your working yarn behind the empty peg and just do the next four. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give you a nice, um, clean decrease where it's not all gonna be, you know, bunched up or, or bulky or anything like that, one, two, three, and then here's my four, um, when you do thread it closed. And that way it's nice and smooth and then we can add our pom-pom so you're just going to continue that all the way around I'm going to continue here so go ahead and pause the video and then meet me back once you're at your starting peg all right and I am knitting off my last one and carrying that back okay so now you can see that every fourth peg there I am here's my starting peg one two three four is empty Okay, and every third peg has two strands on it. Now what you're gonna do here is simply knit the first two. So I'm at my starting peg. Oh, trying to escape. Get back on there. There we go. And then on the third one, where I have two strands, you're just gonna knit both those off. So if it's easy for you to just grab both strands, you can totally do that. If you're one of those people where it's a little difficult for you, just knit one off at a time. It's not a big deal, you'll get the same effect. And then once you've knitted both of those off, you're gonna carry that working yarn back to peg two. So you're gonna repeat the, the same process, except you're gonna go back one. So go ahead and work this all the way around and then meet me back here when you're at your starting peg. All right, and I'm coming up on the last one for this round. And come on. And move that back. All right. So same thing as before. Now you'll see, here's my starting peg. Pegs three and four are empty, and pegs two have two strands on them. So you're just going to complete that for one more round, leaving us with two strands on your first peg. And then we're just simply going to thread off and close it up. So go ahead and I'll meet you back here. All right. Now you can see I'm on this last one here. So let me knit those two off and move that over. Okay. So Every peg, um, that was your first peg, which is also the one that if you marked it like I did, it's going to be your knit peg, has two. This one drove me crazy because it was a ick in the yarn. You know how sometimes they get those fuzzies? But because it's going to be at the top, nobody's going to see it. I'm not going to stress it. Normally, my OCD would drive me crazy, but I'm not going to allow it this time. But as you can see, there's two strands on every first peg, which was also your... Um, one knit peg so to do this to thread it off just like any other hat i'm sure a lot of you have done hats before you're going to give it one complete round give it a nice long tail and you don't need more than that with this because you're only knitting or threading off um one peg for every four so 
see if I could do this through the camera. Nope, maybe. Let's see. Woo! I did it. <laughs> it's the little things. Okay, it's the little things. <laughs> okay, so what you're going to do is bring your working yarn behind this one, behind these three, come around to your starting peg, and then you're going to go from the bottom and grab both of those strands. And then once you have it on there, what I like to do is just gently tug and pop those two off. And then as you move it around, it'll get looser because of the tension. So again, go come from behind, pop it off, and just complete this all the way around, threading it off. There you go. See, as I'm going around, it's getting easier to just pop those off. I am really digging how this hat came out. I, I you know, like I mentioned earlier, I, you know, I'm not always 100% sure because I literally take my sketch pen and my tablet when my husband and I go to bed at night. And if I have an idea come in my mind... I draw up a chart and um, how I think it's going to go sometimes is better than what I imagined, sometimes not so much. But this one is one of those ones where it was actually, it came out a lot cuter than I anticipated. And the great thing about this is you can actually work this up into a cowl, which is what I might do because I do have another, um, another one of these cakes in the same color. And um, I may work it up as a cow, but I have the the new limited edition um, 5 8 gauge, which this is a 5 8 um, loom. Oh, see? Even I make mistakes. I forgot to move this one over, which you can easily do. Or what you can do, if it's a little tight, just grab this one and then just come right on over and grab the other one. So that way they're both on there. And then grab the last one. Um, but I have the, the five eights all in one. And um, I can use that to make a cowl. So what you're going to do, see this is the, the outside of it. Okay. So cute. I'm really loving this. Okay. Um, now you're just going to pull it closed. And sometimes when you do it like this, it'll start to curl on the outside. That's okay. Don't worry. You can always fix that. So as you can see, like what I'm doing here, I'm going in as I'm pulling it closed and see how this one part just doesn't want to cooperate. That's okay. I'm going to make it. Okay. And then once you have it cinched like that, just tuck in any stray pieces that you like. Then I'm going to pass my needle through, try and grab it, there we go, hold on to it, and then inside out, and I have a lot of excess yarn, so I'm just going to shorten that up a bit, and trim it, because I, I don't need all that excess, and um, as you can see, you're going to want to tighten that up just a little bit just to make sure it's completely closed and as you can see right here it is all right so what i like to do is i just make a fist like that and i close it up completely and then i just start stitching it through and it's really that simple and i'm sure a lot of you um if not everybody has already done hats before and with this one, it does have the palm with it as part of this little cupcake, which I'm going to add to this. And then one more for luck. And the great thing is with this palm is it's already got the string to attach it connected. So to do that, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm not going to cut this yet. And the reason why is I'm going to use that as a stabilizer for the palm. Okay. So I'm just going to de-thread that needle. I'm going to turn this right side out. 
And obviously I'm going to weave in this um, tail here. But as you can see, that's a nice clean close right there. Now the palm's going to cover this ugly little guy right here. But even if you don't want to put a palm on it, still super cute. Okay. So for the palm, what I like to do is thread the needle with the palm string. Come on. There we go. Now there's two strands here, so I'm going to believe it's going to cooperate. And it did. And the fans go wild. Okay. You're going to find that hole again, which, boop, it's right there. And you're going to run your needle right through it. And just kind of keep an eye on that. And then once you see that both strands have gone through, flip it inside out. And I hold on to it with my fingers also. So it's inside out again. And then what I'm going to do here is because I already have this string from the palm and I also have the string that I left over that I tied it from. I'm going to de-thread that one and I'm going to tie. Let me cut a little bit. Oh, camera down. <laughs> Everybody's safe. All right. So I'm going to cut this just a little bit shorter because I don't need a ton of it now. And, um, I'm going to, and make sure that you keep this palm one really tight because you want it flat against, and don't be afraid to tie it tight. You want it flat against the hat. You don't want a, a super floppy palm. There you go. I gave it three good knots. Okay. And now I'm just going to snip this. I'm going to weave in my end here. Where's, there we go. Make a little clean, clean cut here. Hopefully this won't, because it's kind of frayed, won't cause me an issue with threading. Work with me. Woohoo! I am three for three. How about that? Okay, and for this, because I didn't do a really super long one, um, I just go straight up through the closest rib and grab every other, and I just gently tug that. I don't want to pull it super tight um, because it, you know, you don't want it to be uneven with the rest of it. And then, if it's long enough, I come down. Oh, about halfway on the other side not all the way because the point is you're gonna weave in your threads and then yeah making sure it was on the right side you're gonna snip let's turn this right side out and that's the extra piece that was on there Cut all the way back. And let's put it on a mannequin and see how it looks. Hold on. All right. And as you can see here, I flip the brim up sometime. It really depends on what you want to do. And again, I made this one a little more slouchy because I got lots of hair. And you can see our palm is hanging out. It's not flipping and flopping all over the place. So there you go. I really enjoyed making this for you guys. I hope you do too. And thank you again to everybody who has supported me with the Patreon and getting started on that. It really means a lot to me. And I can't express thanks enough. Words just don't seem to be enough. But um, I do have lots of great things in the future for everybody. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all so much. I can't wait to see what you guys make with this one.